Uh, I guess I'll just start asking you to just tell me, in the last 24 hours, how do you describe this last day for yourself? It's hard to describe. Uh, difficult. Um, unreal, pretty much. You feel like you're in a nightmare of some sort? Yeah, I've said that a couple times. Definitely, it's not a set in yet. I don't think completely. Very just sad. Do you feel like you're still kind yeah. of in shock? Probably, yeah. When, um, if you could just tell me, who is Katie to you? Oh, uh, Katie is my favorite person in the whole world. Without a doubt. Um, I spent all the time with her, and even if, like, she was at work, that was normal. And if I was at home, not without her, I, I, I missed her even in those times, you know. I always wanted her to be around. She was funny. She's smart. She always, I always tell people, I'm like, you know, I have random facts. I like tell people, but I always learn them from her. She has something new to teach me every day. And that was one of my favorite things about her um just she's so smart like I, and i always told her she could have done anything in the whole world that she wanted to do she could have been anything but she hated school so <laughs> she didn't uh take that path but you know she was charismatic even if she didn't like to be around everybody all the time she was very to herself a lot of times she liked alone time so she's, she was a really good person. She never did anything bad to anybody, you know? She was really uh, sarcastic. Um, maybe had a little bit of dark humor, but I like that about her. Um, we actually met at uh, G's in Midtown. She was a bartender there, and I, I used to go there all the time uh, when I first moved to Atlanta because I didn't have any friends and my brother worked there and so that's how we met and she always worked the day that I would go up there most of the time and one day uh, we were both just having drinks together and she said hey she knew how to get me and she was like you want to come meet my dog and I was like I do want to come meet your dog so we went to her house and like hung out with her and her dog that was pretty much the beginning of everything how long ago was that? Oh, that was a long time ago probably eight years ago almost seven so you all been for almost we s officially we celebrated our sixth year last month mm -hmm. so six years together yeah what was your last memory of her if you could talk about like tuesday night uh i mean we didn't usually i didn't usually work tuesday but i guess i mean we had coffee together in the morning like we always do, and just said, you know, goodbye, uh, see you later. She came by with the dog, because if she's out with the dog and she's over there, she'll always comes to say hi, lets me see him, and uh, just, you know, check up on me, see how long I was going to be at work, and, you know, I said I love you, be safe, I'll see you later. That was pretty much it. What made you, you know, say, hey, she's not fast yet, or she yeah. normally is, what's the routine, and what stood out as not normal? Well, I didn't get home till about an hour after I saw her, and she, we live like a mile up the road, so she would have been home by then, because she wouldn't have gone much further uh, walking the dog. She doesn't usually stay out that late to, to walk him, so I... And if, if I get home and she's not there, I always call her, you know, just be like, hey, what's your ETA, where you at, whatever. And she didn't answer, and she always answers. So that's when I knew something was really wrong. I called her a bunch of times, she didn't answer. I texted her a bunch, she didn't respond. So I pretty much knew immediately something wasn't right. I didn't know what it was, but I knew something was happening, could be gone wrong. And you pinged your phone. Yeah, I used the Find My iPhone app. I know of 
her information um, she uses. So I, I got on there to look for her, and uh, that's what showed me she was at the park. So. What do you want to say to whoever is out there that did this? <sighs> I honestly don't know, but it's, this is the worst thing I could imagine. Uh, it's, it's definitely like a horror, horror movie. And Katie didn't deserve to go through what she did. You know, my biggest thing that I've been saying for the past day is like, it's really sad for me to lose her, but I can't even imagine how scared she was to for that to happen you know she wasn't an easily scared person she was very confident she felt safe being in midtown and that in her final moments like that was taken from her and that bothers me the most and I hope they find them I hope they get what they deserve too Well, the one thing that, that stands out so much for for me and the relationship, and we're extremely close, and uh, Katie made Emma happy. Uh, they had a good life together. They, they, they've started with nothing. They built on that. Uh, they lost their first home in a house fire, and they had to move uh, to where they live now. And uh, But they were so resilient through that process. and. Katie, like she said, was she was so intelligent. I loved conversation with her because um, there's several subjects that her and I could talk about, and she always knew the answer, which was awesome. But the way it is affecting Emma uh, through this, uh, I always knew that Emma was safe with Katie, and uh, she protected her. She was. Uh, they had such a great relationship that when a for a parent. If you don't have to worry about your children all the time, which most do, but I knew as long as they were together, I didn't have to worry about Emma. And uh, Katie filled that part, just as any life partner does, is someone who she cared so much about Emma, she made sure that Emma was okay. And, and Emma and she did the same thing for her. I'm extremely sad because because Emma is hurting and it's Emma lived here before she and Katie they were together for a couple of years before they ended up uh, moving in together so Emma was here and but she drove into Midtown to work every day and then one day she says you know hey well, dad I'm gonna move out me and Katie are gonna move in together and I thought it was such a great thing for them so they wouldn't have to drive and everything and um they just, just always had a security about their relationship. You know, in a lot of relationships, people, they think you're going to, you know, they change relationships so often, but they weren't that way. They were dedicated to each other. And so it makes me feel sad that what she's going to miss out on because of it. I work at Henry's. Oh, okay. uh, I've done pretty much everything you can do there, but currently I've just been uh, serving and then I manage a couple days a week, um, closing. So. And so I just wanted to talk about you all's routine, um, even though your schedules are important, I think some of them get a little inaccurate, <laughs> so I want to clear sure. that up since I'm talking to you. They said that you all have gone to dinner before, now was that not the case? Or no. I was at work, yeah. And she stopped by your job to say, hey, mm -hmm. before she went out walking the dog. Um, yeah. Did she work that day? That she didn't day? work oh. that day. Uh, I don't normally work that day, but she was supposed to go out of town today to go see her mom. She was supposed to fly to Michigan to see her mom. She hadn't seen her in a while. So I worked that day so that I could take her to the airport. Um, 
and yeah, I, I was at work really late. Um, we got we have some new people, and the things are just taking longer, so I was there really way later than usual. So we did not go to dinner. No. She always walks the dogs late. We're, I mean, we both work at night, so we're always up during the evenings. Like, normally, we're not, we don't get up until afternoon, normally, you know, like 1 o'clock. And then, you know, we don't get our day started. We don't go to work until 4 at the earliest, normally. So, yeah, usually, you know, we'd get home from work, and she, she would walk the dog. Usually, I wouldn't be off yet, so she would leave before I got home. And she would usually be back about when I got home or um, a little bit after. So, I mean, it was normal for her to, you know, like I saw her at 11.30. That's in Midtown, like that's not really that late. There was still a bunch of people around, even like right up the street. There was, you know, that's where Blake's is and G's and there were, t there were tons of people around. She always goes out. I, I know that she, she didn't normally go like through the park, I don't think, like she did sometimes, but she always took different routes. She liked knowing the neighborhood. She always, she knew every part of Midtown, so she could go anywhere. Yeah, I mean, I've never had a problem. You know, I always told people like, cause a lot of people would be like, oh, you know, it seems like you're a woman walking alone or like whatever. And I was like, yeah, I mean, the most I've ever had, like I have homeless people come up to me and ask me for money, but generally they're, harmless people they just they you know you give them a dollar you say no and you move on nobody's ever really given us a problem ever so Bowie he named after David Bowie okay. that was like Bowie was one of her baby Katie's favorite musical artist. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, everybody's been really nice, and I've just I'm thankful for people reaching out. You know. It's actually pretty overwhelming so uh a lot of people have donated money and i'm just i'm happy because her i know her mom doesn't have the money to take care of everything and neither do i so that that was really overwhelming to see how much people were giving so we don't have to worry about that right now you know katie always sent her mom money to help with her bills and i know so i know she needs the help I was already, I'd already left my house, so I was just going down the street that she normally, that I would think she would be near, I was just going to ride around where I thought she would be, and because I couldn't get it to to ping right away, and when it did, I, the first thing I noticed is that it wasn't moving, and I was like, she wouldn't just be stopped somewhere, like she wouldn't sit somewhere and like she was with the dog, she was just gonna walk with the dog. She didn't like hang out anywhere when she did that. So that was the first thing I noticed. I thought maybe she had just like dropped her phone somewhere and didn't notice or, you know, I didn't know what, what to think about it, but I, I knew it was strange. If she wasn't really extroverted, but everybody knew her, like she knew a ton of people, but she's worked in Midtown and lived here for, like lived there for 11, 12 years, I think. So she knew a lot of people and honestly, Katie probably wouldn't care. Uh, 
more people said or she probably wouldn't want the attention she didn't like attention she was from the north so she always thought southern people were like over extra friendly and she thought it was really weird uh when she first moved here she got a little more used to it she still would be like you know a head nod's good enough for her if somebody wanted to acknowledge her on the street or something you know but so honestly she probably wouldn't care too much she i i know that she knew people cared about her and she had a lot of friends and those people i know they'll remember her fondly because she never gave anybody a reason not to you know she was never hurtful or did did anything to make anybody think less of her i don't i don't think Um, I guess I don't really have much. It's been really hard for me to, to think, uh, late, the last 30 something hours. So, you know, she was a good person. I, I want them to figure out who did this because it was, it's, she didn't, like I said, she didn't deserve it. And I just, I hate it. I hate it for her that she had to go through that. So. Well, Emma's being really modest on the talents that Katie had. She was also a songwriter, self-taught musician, guitar collector, book collector. She was a pretty highbrow person, even if somebody said, oh, she's a bartender. Well, the bartender behind that bar probably had the highest IQ in the room. Uh, she's just recently wrote several songs and she shared them over social media and, and things and they were beautiful songs and they were about life and uh, she was just I don't yeah. Katie did not expect a lot she was great at, at writing all. music for sure she, was a, she, she didn't expect praise from anyone or anything she was her own person who yeah. Uh, she loved to share that music though when she was finished with it and I used to love getting them and uh, it was satisfaction enough for her just that if one person liked yeah, it. Yeah, she definitely always said that like, she'd love to make money making music but she did it for her emotional well-being. She liked to just, she was a creative person, she liked to do it. You know, we, we painted for fun. Uh, she always wanted to play chess board games. She's very intellectual and creative. So, I think she grew up in Berkeley. I'm not super familiar with that area. But she moved here from Michigan about a little over 10 years ago. Yeah. Do you so love picking here from the music or are you telling me what you feel comfortable with? Yeah, I mean, you can listen to it. I'm sure she'd love. She yeah. wanted people, Let's like, I shared it on Facebook and stuff, and I'd be like, she'd be like, oh, I got this many listens. And she's like, it's, it'd be like 12 people. It's not a lot, but it's, it was, more she was like, it's more than I thought, though, do it. So it always made her really happy. It's on SoundCloud, so I would have to. Is it a video or it's just a, the audio? They're all just audios. Oh. Um, Actually, I have the app because I downloaded the app so that I could so follow action. her. Yeah, I was like, you at least, you at least have me following you. She had a few followers. Uh, do you have a specific song she wanted? Um, was there one you thought she might have been proud of, or one that you really liked? Oh, she had a few really good ones. My. on her actual thing. I don't know how to work this thing. Her favorite one is really long, but it's... It's fine. We can kind of play like the chorus or the intro. Um, she's... She was always really, um, I just want to say this before I play this song because it was, it's a little bit political, but it's, 
she felt very strongly in like her views but she was always really nice about it like she's the kind of person like I know that she would tell me about regulars she had at the bar that would disagree with her on things and she would just try to change their minds little by little and like every time she saw them she she always talked about the next time they come in I'm gonna talk to them about <laughs> this and uh, that's what I loved about her because her and I are the same politically and everything <laughs> we do. So she always we wanted. Would, we would one on one. We would get people, you know, because so she always just, wanted to. Uh, she's a big change people's minds. She's a big she social could. justice person. Oh, okay. Yeah. Does it have the graph? It does. Well, it's showing an ad right now because it's they have to make money. right. Did. She stood up for what she believed, and she tried to promote that through her music. She, you know, uh, social justice was a huge thing for her. You know, Katie always believed that everyone on earth was equal, and she wanted to make sure that everyone had that opportunity to be equal. And that's the music she wrote you know, about telling the truth about what it's like. You know. And, She did everything herself. She's a one man band. <laughs> she had friends that she had been in bands with, and she was going to see them while she was in Mich Michigan and play some of the music with them. So um, she was very excited about that.